Simon Taylor, long-time commentator, competitor in the famous Stobo special. Sounds fantastic, this car, as it booms and bellows its way up the hill. It's got a lot of power. You can tell when he, when he puts his foot down, it really does get up and go. He's nice and neat and tidy through the kink. Breaking into bottom S at 77. Yeah, with me now. It's such a pretty car, this. Very distinctive and uh, obviously iconic, uh, iconic looking car. So it uh, takes a nice stab of opposite lock, controlling the oversteer on the power for that big V8 and uh, heading towards the finish. Here's a very famous car with an incredible history and Simon Taylor, who you will have heard if you're old enough <laughs> commentating on Formula One. Simon, that was a good period. But um, you've had this car for, what, 25 years? Uh, pretty much that, yes. Um, it's actually a car I've known about since I was a schoolboy in the mid-1950s because there was an article about it in an American magazine, which I had at school. And I thought, that is the most amazing car I've ever seen. And um, about, I don't know, 40 years later, I was lucky enough to be able to buy it. But it started life as a Grand Prix car uh, built by HWM with a two-litre Alta engine. It did. In those days, they had a two-litre Formula 2. Um, and the car was built with this offset driving position, but without the wings and lights. The idea was that HWM were going to run it in Formula 2 and as a sports car. In the end, they never did run it as a sports car. But it was the first car, or the, each of the HWM team cars, were the first cars that Sterling Moss ever drove at anybody else's expense. Up to then, he'd been driving his own little cars. Um, he was very much the coming man, and HWM got to him first, and he drove for HWM through the early 50s. He raced this particular car in 1950, had some wonderful races with it, beat the Formula 2 Ferrari team on occasion and even ran in Formula 1 races occasionally and gave a good account of himself. So it was actually a very important car in Sterling Moss's career. In those days it had a little four-cylinder two-litre Alta engine. When it was sold by HWMs it ended up in the hands of 20th Century Fox who decided, as film companies do about every 20 years, to make the ultimate motor racing movie, um, which they did. It was called The Racers. No computer graphics in those days, uh, so you just had the hero, Kirk Douglas, sitting in my cockpit with a moving backdrop. It all looked terribly homemade and not very good, but the film actually was quite successful. And then after the film, 20th Century Fox sold it to a man uh, from Seattle who'd been racing in Allard, wanted something a bit more modern. And he bought the car, sold the engine, and put a small block Chevrolet in the car. And in those days, the small block V8 Chevrolet was very new. It had started to be used by drag racers and uh, by Speedway people. But we think this is the first car in the world that actually did road racing, circuit racing with a small block Chevrolet. And if you think this engine has been phenomenally successful ever since, um, and is indeed still being successful, that's another little notch on the gun of this car's history. And it's called small block, but it's quite a big capacity, isn't it? Well, it is. It's in the form we've got it. It's about 5.7 litres. And um, it still has this slightly curious carburetor setup. It seems odd to have three carburetors for a V8 engine, but that's how it works. Nowadays, V8 engines have a great big four-barrel carburetor sitting in the middle. Those hadn't happened in those days. And obviously, we want to keep the engine as it was in 1955. So we still have the three carburetors. Um, the engine gives round about 400 brake horsepower. And the car is very light. Mm. So it, uh, it has a yeah. lot of grunt. It goes a bit. It certainly does. And it never goes on a trailer. No, I, I'm afraid trailers are against my religion. I, I think if you want to enjoy a car, to have to drag it to meetings, sitting on a trailer and then have to muck around with tents and tow cars and all that sort of stuff. What I can do, because this car is road legal, is that I can leave my home in London and drive it to the event mm. There's just enough room uh, beside the driver 
to put in my crash helmet and my racing overalls and a change of knickers, which is quite important with this car because it is quite scary. And I've driven it to France. I've actually shipped it to Australia and raced it there. Um, it has been back to the west coast of America and I've raced it there. So it's uh, been it's been a friend really for a quarter of a century and, and, and it, I just love it. And it passes everything on the road except a gas station. <laughs> That's probably absolutely the right the right thing. It does, I think, on, on a good run. It's not too bad. It does about 12 miles to the gallon. Uh, it has a very large um, fuel tank, but of course it doesn't have a fuel gauge because racing cars don't have fuel gauges. So here is the, is the fuel. There's the fuel gauge. Yeah. And, and, and you just have to stick it in the front, stick it in the back, I should say, and have a look and say, yeah, that'll that'll get me. That's 20 miles worth. It'll get me to Worcester. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, it's going to be a lovely weekend for driving both on the hill and on the road back home. So, Simon, thanks a lot. It's a treat to see it so many times at Chelsea. It's always a treat to see you at uh, Chelsea, Christopher. Well, Lastly, we'll get you everywhere. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>